Welcome back everyone. Well, welcome back to me since you always been there. And hello to everyone that's new to this channel. I finally found the time to explain you how to build your Avisin Igina antenna. So we're gonna need to go through a bit of theory before to start the actual assembly of the of the device and how to use it. Probably I'm gonna have to shot another video about how to use it let's keep it short i'll introduce you to the gina theories and i'll take you through the building of the actual device okay it's 500 dollars. you have no choice of carrier the battery can't hold a charge and the reception isn't very shut up and take my money Okay, so first thing first, these are all theories and they haven't been proved either wrong or right till today. <laughs> it's actually what I'm trying to do with the old thing. When I started, I thought this would have been a channel in debunking the properties of these devices, but I found myself in getting some results over the years. So again, this is all theories. The devices I'm explaining you, I'm not saying that they work. I can tell you that after two years, strictly following the rules left by the inventor or the clues, the device wasn't actually working, if not by chance. So I would say either zero or 50-50. Once I started looking into it, analyzing all that has been said by Luigi Gina, everything that he wrote in his books and through videos, recording and whatever else, I realized that something was wrong. Once I corrected that little detail, Unfortunately, the devices started to have a very high rate of success. So this video might be instruction for anyone else out there that wants to build the very same device. As I'm gonna explain later, this is my design. I'm gonna explain you the principle of it and you can work out your either simpler or more complex device. It's all up to you. But I would love if someone takes the challenge and builds the very copy of my device better if on the other side of the planet so that we can cross check our data. That way we might become closer to our conclusions because if the first results of the first design were between the zero and 50% of success, after I modified it and uh, enhanced it, as I reckon I did, the ratio of success grew till about 96%. This has been given by a series of factors. First thing, I grew a certain consciousness about the hypothetical use of them. I find out probably the best way in my eyes to test it without badly influencing the environment. Basically, I started using it not to change what the weather condition were at the moment, but to try in attract the correct weather. So basically, I didn't try to get sun on the rainy season. I tried to get rain on the rainy season because we needed it. Two years ago, I tried to get sun in the rainy season and I don't think that was a very wise thing to do. It's true that it will prove that the device works, but there are a better way to prove it. This is what I'm working on right now. I'm trying to build the full-scale copy of the Gina laboratory, not the harvesting device, but the generator, which is there, this is the 3D design, the generator and the transmitter antenna. And I'm trying to build it on the desert side so that if I can call clouds and rain up there where it never been raining in history, that will prove if the device works or if it's just a scam. So, theory. We start with saying that it's not been proven, but Luigi Gina said that he was the disciple of Guglielmo Marconi, who is the alleged 
inventor of the radio before they gave it to Tesla. So hypothetically, this 3D draw here has been taken by a 2D draw drawn by Marconi in 1936. So it's nothing new design-wise, but it's all based on Luigi Gina's theories. So flying over the fact if he was Guglielmo Marconi's disciples or not, leaving aside how they came up with these theories would be enough for you to know that they came out with all this observing nature, the behavior of snails and uh, other insects and plants. He sees the universe as a big magnetic field, which it is, obviously. So the theory says that the sun and the stars have positive charges, while planet Earth and the planets are averagely, they have negative magnetic charges. The energy that is coming from the sun and so from all the other stars toward planet Earth, it comes on a very wide frequency, which is all through. There is a visible part of the spectrum, which is a very short one, the visible light. Then we have all the, the long waves and the short waves. The theory goes that part of this energy, so let's call it magnetic energy, which is part of the invisible light, comes over her with a clockwise spiroidal movement, then hits her, goes through the entire planet, the visible light gets stopped by opaque objects, and then, for example, the X-rays get stopped by something as solid as lead, then the gamma rays goes further in and so on. So the shorter the wave, the deeper it get to getting to the smallest particles which go through the entire planet Earth. This magnetic energy that travels clockwise and on a spiral that way our Earth supposedly goes through the entire planet and gets stopped by other particles coming from the other side and bounces on the very center of the planet. The theory says that the very center of planet Earth is being kept hot also because of this phenomena going on. After it, it bounces on the very center, comes back on an anti-clockwise spiral that way because if something Thing is rotating clockwise since from upstairs. When it bounces and the point of reference becomes downstairs, it keeps rotating clockwise since from upstairs, but going up way and seen from underneath is gonna look like it is a counter clockwise spiral the movement. The theory says that the interaction of these two clockwise and counterclockwise energies creates a certain vibration, a certain resonance. I forgot to say that the energy that leaves planet Earth has been filtered by the entire planet. First thing has lost its colors because the visible light has been stopped by the surface. And second thing, it goes back with a negative charge. So the interaction of these two energy, positive and negative, creates a sort of resonance that is believed to be the very creation act. Um, I don't know how to put it, but uh, that's what creates matter, as we can see in the universe. So without that interaction, he says that matter would not exist. This is the theory. Then now that he knew what's the shape of this energy, he could try to harness this Luigi Gina. This is going to be the video about building the antenna that can collect that kind of energy, which is basically a giant spiral built in a certain way and a smaller antenna, both made of metal. The other one is obviously the generator, which it's another story, but to give you the basic info, it's something that Igina discovered in uh, 1936 in Guglielmo Marconi's laboratory. I discovered what is known to be impossible today, which is the monopole. Because as we all know, uh, when a magnetic field is created or is already there, it's composed by two different positive and negative magnetic fields. There is never a single one. Otherwise, we would have free energy devices and levitation, whatever. It's in contradiction of one of the basic physics 
it loads. That's also what I'm trying to prove, if this machine was real or not. But that's another story. Anyway, he discovered by accident after other trials in the laboratory. But anyway, I haven't shown it to you before. That's, that's a sarcophagus. I'm gonna show it to you soon. But this needs at least a couple of hours of explanation. That's, that's a story for another time. So for now, we're moving to the, the garage so that I can show you the actual machine and take you through the, the various stages to build it. It's very, very, very simple, basic. Thanks for listening. This was the theory, although very summarized, very plain with no details. If you all want to know more about it, unfortunately, the only books about this kind of stuff, they are in Italian language. The original book written by Luigi Gina is this one. You can probably find it online. I'm working on a translation. I've actually finished and then I'm working on a commentary of this and then I'm going gonna have to ask for the copyright distributor. Yeah, that's one of the two books. The other book is this one. This is the actual editor. These two books here, they have more info of than whatever I can give you. If I can tell you something more about all these things, it's all coming from just my experience. Ah, yeah, to conclude, I have to say something. The inventor, I don't know why we can hypothesize about it, but probably the more plausible would be old age. You are. In the first years of his studies, he stated what I just said to you, that the energy comes with a clockwise way over hurt and leaves an anti-clockwise way seen from downstairs. What happens is that he has been preaching for years to build this kind of device here with a clockwise spiral and then it would generally goes like, okay, but if you turn it upside down, you'll see that it's a anti-clockwise clockwise spiral which is not true the truth is that this is an anti-clockwise spiral which is the opposite of that one it's not just turning it upside down so what it comes out is that there are four kind of energies of the same energy. Igina was showing this phenomena happening like if it was a laser ray coming from sun to planet Earth, which it isn't. If it's all through what is stating, it goes 360 by 360 all around the sun in all the directions and the energy is coming from all the entire universe from every sun and stars out there. So what happens is that the energy doesn't behave as it says it doesn't perforate planet earth and hits in the perfect very center those are just few of them that get attracted by i don't know gravity let's say or whatever other we just travel through earth because caught on the very side other bounces other going back and bouncing against other coming from other planets going through another planet and going uh, in the very center of planet earth those are all different variations which comes out to have a clockwise and anti-clockwise positive energy and a clockwise and anti-clockwise negative energy. So in the case of the generation of the energy of the monopole, you, you can forget about all these theories because hypothetically you're already generating either positive or negative energy at your wills. In the case of harnessing these energies, you have to keep in mind that on the sunny day, so in the midday, you're going to have more positive energy clockwise coming per perpendicularly down to your place, like a solar panel and more anti-clockwise so not these spiral capsided but anti-clockwise seen from downstairs spiral so those two they're gonna be the most powerful in the daytime in the nighttime is a different story with other planets on a certain line with the moon interacting these are all different variations so 
It's not as simple as put it by Luigi Gina. After I realized that, I started in building the anti-clockwise spiral built on the correct way. Once I started doing that, everything changed and I started having the results I wanted. So the video you saw on my YouTube channel creating, I never seen anyone putting on the internet a video where the sky is completely sunny and free and says, I'm gonna try to create clouds there on the right side. And it turns on the machine and the clouds start to appearing. So I cannot convince you more than I already did with those videos, if not taking you in front of the real machines and see it with your eyes. So that's, that's the end game. So anyway, said all this, thanks for listening. This was the theory. We're gonna now move to chapter number two, building the machine. Catch you in the garage, guys. Okay, so here we are, chapter two, how to build the devices. So as I said before, they're very, very easy. It's just basic. Uh, so to split it in two, so I'm gonna have a few snapshots along somewhere here in the screen to help you out in the various stages. But anyway, I'm shooting um, with the GoPro for the details, so you, you're, gonna, you're gonna see it all. So first thing, it's all disconnected. So hypothetically, it is charging by the alleged uh, energy, but I think I'm doing the same thing that Luigi Gina was doing and so discharging the machines directly into the into the ground. That one is connected to a big aluminum plate on the roof and the lower one has a big rod dug like a meter into the ground. Generally I connect them together so I link the two spirals and the whole thing discharges into the ground. Uh, the theory goes that aluminium attracts and collects the most of this alleged sun energy and earth energies. The smaller the bit of, of aluminium, the better. As Luigi Gina said, it's better. So this copper pipe here, the one com that uh, makes the um, um, clockwise spy descending spiral these are full of aluminium dust this is micronized aluminium dust which you can find on the internet as I did and uh, the whole thing it's connected obviously to a hand uh, this is a kind of a springy thing that I made let me put a glove on and uh, as you can see this can be attached to the transmitter so this is the receiver the big antenna the helix one so that part there is supposed to collect the sun energy and this one the lower one which is an opposite is like it was reflected on a on a surface of water can you see the mirror thing is not just that one capsided but this one is an ascending anti-clockwise spiral helix said that this is the transmitter we'll talk about later let's start with the receiver the receiver itself it's very easy to... so the first thing that matters is the mass the mass, the entire mass, so the amount of metal and powders and, and cables you can put on it will make allegedly the difference. In my experience it does. The bigger, the better. Imagine this energy can rotate only clockwise descending. So if you see the whole thing from above, you'll see that each lap, it's not perpendicular underneath the previous one. So the whole spiral is properly and gradually enlarging itself till the base. What I did, as you can see in the, the snapshots, I started by creating um, a sort of, of structure 
Uh, I use Bambio because I had that one. You can actually do way better than this, way better than this. Like every project, the better you start, the better results you get out of it. So as I said, this is my design, but you can do as you want. You can change whatever. I'm explaining you the principle. I'd like if someone creates the very same one. If you start with a solid base, you'll get a better result. So now you see how it should be. You can start with drawing it down, make a beautiful draw of it in all the view that you need to, and start with selecting the right material and uh, calculating properly the material that you need. So I won't give you measures, diameters, gauges, and whatever else. I'm just giving you the lines. So you start with a structure that properly designed will be better than this. But anyway, this is how I went on. I started with, uh, with building a bamboo structure and then I started with folding it um, with creating this big spiral in, in and connected the parts so uh, then I filled it inside this uh, pipe there is an entire cable which was quite hard to put in so this is why I used pieces uh, bits so that I can I could fill the cable and also the dust, the aluminium dust. So there is a copper cable and aluminium dust in it, which is all connected together and supposedly uh, it, it, it functions as a big um, wire that collects the energy and discharge it to our transmitter. So then what I did is just add, it has been adding a lot of wire, the more copper I, I could, you can't tell really well out there, probably from the from the shots, snapshots. You can see that I created the tip and then placed it, connected it. Anyway, then you can build it with a, a mm, symmetrical structure underneath, like this one, a strong one. Uh, I used wood because hypothetically it's uh, the proper thing to isolate this energy. I'm, I'm treating it always as if there was uh, actual power, electric power in it. That's why I'm wearing gloves, that's why I'm using copper. For building the big spiral, for the collecting the earth energy, which after thinking about it, I realized that obviously, if it, the only energy that comes out of planet Earth is the one that bounces in the very center of planet Earth and, and comes back with the negative magnetic charge. So that means that there is a much lesser negative energy coming out of planet Earth than positive energy coming from the sun. So I wanted it to have a bigger aluminum mass to collect it, although this is not in dust, but I ran out of money. So I used a big cable, which is what you can see on the, on the back side here is aluminum. This is the, cop the big copper, very thick copper that I chopped to, to create the, to fill all the um, spiral, the big spiral, and this is the, the aluminum one. Um, copper pipes and whatever else. So anyway, uh, once you build the structure, I suggest you strongly to build them separately because uh, you need quite a lot of strength to bend properly all these things. And I suggest you also to use math. So uh, as you can see here, I, I marked lines and plant a screw each mark so for example i started with mark one the second pole was mark one the third pole was mark one the sec the no sorry mark two and then the sending mark three mark four mark five mark six mark seven so that i created a geometrical uh, pro pro proper spiral um, so i suggest you to do that especially with the copper one, which is very malleable. Well, it's hard to get it on the right shape. Well, you can be fussy or not, it's up to you. So once you create that, you only need, uh, obviously, a connection uh, from uh, each one. 
So this is the spring from the, the solar one, this, this is the um, ground one, but as you can see, I'm always using copper. And obviously um, a connection to the transmitter. So once you connect it, these two, uh, you hypothetically are discharging, collecting what is naturally already there and discharging it in this uh, rotating antenna, hypothetically. So let's talk about the transmitter. So the transmitter itself, uh, it's very basic you can build it much better than I did uh, I started with building the base a solid base where you can I, I used a metal cable to stabilize it and, and to try to stop it but you can build it as you want as I said you can build it with triangles you can build a pyramid you, the shape is doesn't really matter in this case as long as you use wood and it's all separated from the ground so uh, the parts are basically a big shaft with a big shaft with um, what do you call it um, with bearings there is a bearing here that is holding the weight as you can see I've been very rudimental and I I created basically this pipe here is both holding on to the tripod and holding the weight of the entire antenna so those screws this is all a copper pipe this is all copper pipe full of aluminium dust and uh, that's the greasy part of it where it should it's always been working, so I mean, you can do better. Anyway, uh, the part are the shaft connected to the to the tripod. This is a second panel. That second panel you see there, which is out of of line, uh, is not is not parallel to the to the tripod. Is because with that flexion, I can tension the pulley here. Well, the pulley, the, the belt and, and the pulley anyway, so that I don't have to move the motor any, every time. So the other parts are obviously an electric motor that gives and that with a pulley and a, and a belt, as we said, connected to the big pulley. I 3D printed and, and 3D penned this one so you can do better. And uh, the big shaft, the connection, the connection bridge which we're talking about later the cables that takes so the, the the energy comes into this cable goes into the bridge uh, let's talk about it this is a regulator I, 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 I this is my idea so you can do better so this is this cable here the base of the, those cables, the, the, the copper is exposed in the area and there is glue, hot glue, to keep the, hold them in place. And uh, so this bridge here that I can lift and, and put down and when I want and where I want, it's made to uh, make um, a connection which is basically pulsating. Uh, uh, you can do it with a single line of copper touching the cable as long as it touches one but per time you will discharge in all the lines so uh, what happens is that when it's rotating you're creating an ascending helix of the hypothetical energy you already collected so uh, yeah now it's falling apart because I'm not using it and uh, this burned out so I'm using it uh, as you saw in the other videos I'm using the drill to, to turn it so anyway this is my design as I said so uh, I created a bracket to hold the motor in place with the two cable with a easy connector so that I can plug in this is my extension lead so this will go for example outside 
because it's the transmitter you can use it inside as long as you don't have a metal roof in my opinion so you connect your your power there they're connected and the other two the other side of the cable <laughs> you connected to a DC power supply that will allow you to control the rules per minute while the voltage and the amperes of these motors so that you can control the rule per minute basically that's it what you have to do is build a, a good shaft where to sit the old antenna and create a good traction here so it doesn't really matter what kind of pulley what kind of motor you're using what um, sort of um, setup you you'll have uh, as long as these revolves and you can control the rule per minute and you have a bridge of some sort that discharges the power that you're connect, collecting from the other one into these cables that runs along the shaft and above here you can create an antenna of some sort I used uh, zinc metal so that um, it basically as you can see I start thicker and I go um, um, thinner and these are very thin cable because uh, hypothetically the energy discharges on the tips and on corners and uh, I reckon the, the big uh, mass collects the, the, more, the most energy and the small bits are more to uh, irradiate it so uh, again you can do it whatever you want this is a flower looking shape was easy to to come off with uh, the math so I start with a short one and launch it so each uh, arm is longer of the same amount of the previous one so this is all in ratio this is Fibonacci uh, inspired but you don't have to really use it so at the top I could connect it uh, um, um, still no, actually it's an iron um, thingy here <laughs> to as a tip but I also use a lot this one which is um, basically just a cone like in the um, um, travel constable um, devices and I just pin it that way depending on what I want to call uh, but in my opinion the best tip you can create is the rodin coil uh, it's very easy to to create very very easy i won't bother you with how to you just go on the youtube and uh, there are plenty of links uh, about it the only thing that um, changes on this one is that this one is a mingle with between the rodin coil and this can you see the two spirals one going up and the other down as now i'm going to show you i forgot about those and uh, there is a contours clockwise a small spiral going around and a big clockwise spiral going around so this is halfway between an invention of Pierluigi Gina which is uh, uh, Mainly, mainly a, a water purifier where you can sit your bottle of water in the middle and it purifies with the energies um, of uh, earth and sun and earth and uh, these two little antenna uh, they are omnipresent in the Igina's um, inventions because allegedly they keep uh, the various cable um, loaded with the earth energy or, or sun energy so this is the best tip you can use in my opinion and uh, this had always had results so but you know it might be all just coincidences so that's why 
uh, I've liked to someone for, for creating the, whole, the same thing. So as you can see here, I created uh, a lot of spirals, so little spirals. Uh, they are all clockwise seen from above, uh, clockwise spirals. And we start with very tiny one and each turn of the big spiral you'll see that these little helix are getting larger and larger till the very last one is, is quite big one you see and this hand here the tip you can see in all all these um, uh, spirals is classical of the Igina inventions because it's, it, it believes that that's the way to to go to top finished uh, uh, a proper helix that collects the energy so um, but again uh, open to opinions so what I, I done uh, starting with the small one imagine being the, <laughs> the imagine be the, being that energy and coming down if physically you can be attracted by this sacred geometry of, of Luigi Gina Hypothetically, you're encountering a very small helix, so you charge it that amount. When you find a, a medium spiral, so the length of the cable is much, much longer, so you're charging with more energy, and so on, till the big one, which is charged with even more energy. So I'm trying to create in that way a certain preferred way for the energy to flow like you do with electric power taking advantage of the various difference in absorption and whatever else properties uh, of the various metals you can also create this sort of difference in the mass so going from bigger to to smaller you can also implement this one adding spike the best thing to implement this one is enlarging it but again you won't collect that much energy with an harvesting device what you can collect with that is only what is already present in the environment hypothetically if you move into the building the monopole generator so at that point i would say definitely you need a big gigantic mass on top of this where uh, you can attract all that energy that you're creating this is pretty much all i'm gonna have sooner or later to make a video on uh, explaining how to use it or at least to explain what i understood of it with my update if anything was missing and please uh, do it that's pretty much all. Thanks for listening. Thanks for having been waiting for this video. If you didn't consider subscribing already, please subscribe. It helps out. Let me know how it goes. I'm curious if anyone wants to build it now. Next video I'll upload. I'll show you what I've been doing on the last two couple of months that I've been missing from the YouTube. Thanks again. See you soon, guys.
<laughs> and we had a little fella sitting there <laughs> the whole time staring at me like, to whom are you explaining it? To me? You ready? <laughs> You don't have to explain it to me, eh? I don't give a damn. <laughs> Build your devices. Ciao, for the Bello. Bello. Ciao. See ya, guys. <laughs>